to a family food story. Today we've got a pretty awesome $1,785 Azure standard haul for you. We've got tips on how to use things, we've got tips on how to store things, we've got tips on how to make the most of your entire Azure standard order, and we have a giveaway that you're not going to want to miss rich and it's got a really great flavor. We have our new items. They feel great. <laughs> and spicy sauerkraut. Somebody deleted all our video footage so we're doing it again. I'm gonna say it's like 25% of this bag. Two pounds of cherries in this one jar, people. It's so good. All right, so let's start out with our dairy products. We have some items that we get from Azure pretty much every month here. That includes the Nancy's Greek yogurt, the Nancy's sour cream, and the Nancy's cream cheese. The great part about this is that these Greek yogurts, I've got three six packs of them back here. And these are not cheap, but thankfully I was able to get them on sale a few months ago when they were listed at sale price because we check out multiple months in advance, which gives us that sale price for multiple months. We also have one of our favorite cheeses, the Grazer's Jalapeno Jack Cheese. This is another one of those items that was on sale a few months ago and we got it for sale in this cart. And same goes for the raw white cheddar grass fed aged over 120 days. This is our favorite cheddar from Azure. It's dry, it's not squeaky, it's rich, and it's got a really great flavor. And then of course we have butter. We normally get the unsalted butter, but again, it was out of stock. So I noticed that the salted butter was in stock, so I threw that one in the cart. Okay, next is our baking ingredients. On our A Family Food Program buying cycle, we pick one item each month that we buy for the entire year, and this month is baking ingredients. Now, I need to note, this does not include things like our grains or our sweeteners or any of that. It's very specifically things like baking powder. We've got a four pound tub here. Not sure if it's gonna last us a year. We will see. We do have a bit of baking soda still on hand, so we did not get that. I also have some yeast. We've got some of this in the freezer. We're gonna add to our stock. I'm not sure. I don't think this is gonna last us a year. We'll see. And then we also have some chocolate chips. This has been more like a once a month purchase these days because Grayson has been experimenting with the chocolate chip cookies that he's been making. He's gonna start selling them locally and we wanna make sure that we are giving out the very best product possible. So it's taken lots of testing. All right, I wanna take a second to sneak in a Azure Standard quick tip here. Our quick tip for today is to make sure that you are planning to store anything that you order in bulk from Azure Standard. This includes purchasing things like Mylar bags or vacuum seal bags or buckets or barrels or even shelf space to make sure that you have enough space to store what you're purchasing. The way that we do this, it's kind of a three-step process. Fairly simple, not too complicated, but part one is to review the order and make a list of every type of bag, bucket, shelf space, etc., that you're gonna need for each item on your order. Step two is to go through and see what you actually have on hand. And then step three is order anything that you need. Make sure that that comes in before your Azure standard order comes in so that you have it there ready to go. You can set aside some time, get it packaged up, and you're able to manage your food well. Okay, next we have our new items. And this is one that I'm so excited about. I've been waiting for this for a while. So this box here is Azure's newest new product, and it is their quart size canning jars. All right, so I wanna show you inside here. We have the Wide Mouth Quart, and it's got the Azure logo on there. And that, the one thing it's missing is it doesn't have the measurements, which I'll be honest, sometimes I love, sometimes I don't, um, but they feel great. They do feel like they've got like a film on them, and I'm assuming that that's gonna go away when we wash them but it does feel kind of, like it looks kind of cloudy to me even, almost. I'm gonna assume that that's just 
something with the processing. These eventually are going to be coming with the superb canning lids. Right now, they don't have those, I guess, finished. And so right now what they had for available on the website is just the jars without the lids. But you'll notice here on the box, it says the superb, it's got the superb label on here because they are going to be coming with the superb lids and they are very specific on this listing that although the box says that it comes with a superb lid, these specifically do not because they're not ready. So I cannot tell you how happy I am that they went with the superb lid. I know everybody talks about four jars, but in all the testing that we've done, we really were the most happy with the superb lid. So this is a package deal that we are really excited about. And then we have mustard and mustard and mustard and mustard and mustard and mustard and mustard. We have 12 bottles of mustard and I'm really excited. This is another one of Venture's newer products. It's actually been out for a few months. We've ordered it a few times and it's been out of stock. So I'm happy that it came in this time. Now we just have to find something to try it on. Next we have some oolong tea from Mountain Rose Herbs. Azure started carrying Mountain Rose Herb products. This is something that we've been buying from, I believe it's Purely that we've been getting the, our organic oolong tea from that we use to make our kombucha. But I was happy to see that Azure finally had an option that we could get from them, not necessarily produced by them, but at least distributed by them so that we can support them in our kombucha brewing. And then we have a not so new to Azure, but very new to us product, which is the toasted coconut chips. I used to get these from, I think, Thrive Market, and I throw them in our trail mix, and they're delicious. We actually, I'll be honest, we actually filmed this video yesterday, and so this was cut into and sampled and tried, and somebody deleted all our video footage, so we're doing it again. And that's why some of these bags you will notice are open. So these are going to be great and I'm excited to have them to add to our nuts and fruit. And then we have two brand new types of chocolate chips from Azure. We have the semi-sweet with yacan syrup and monk fruit. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I'm going to say it. And then we also have the semi-sweet with coconut sugar. Now, it's a little early in the morning. I'm not really feeling the chocolate chip thing, so I'm not going to taste them right here, but we did taste them last night. And I'm going to be perfectly honest and say that these are not my favorite. The monk fruit ones, I understand it is a totally better healthy alternative than processed sugars. If you are trying to adhere to any sort of diet and you just need to add something in as a substitute, I would say that these are gonna be great. If we were not eating any sugar right now, I would probably have loved these. But when we're eating sugar, they're not so great. These, if you're looking for something that's just a little bit healthier, play around with your diet, I would say yes, go with these. But in all out total, honestly, I'm gonna say go with the real ones if you just want something that's the most delicious because they are. I do also wanna point out that these are not exactly chocolate chip shape. They are more like chocolate droplet, <laughs> chocolate nub, chocolate, I don't know. Do you, do you like it? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? Kevin likes the monk fruit chocolate chips. Try these. I like those better. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I told mom I'm really happy that we had the coconut and the pecan. So what? Nope. What? You don't like it? Aftertaste? Yeah, the aftertaste. Mm -mm. Nope. First one. Okay, our last new item is something again that I'm super excited about. Honestly, Azure has so many new products that I'm really excited about and this is one because it's just totally different kind of off the wall they have started selling fabric and i think one of the things that's so exciting to me is the fact that i just a few months ago when we were doing a kombucha giveaway i thought to myself oh i wonder if Azure sells fabric and i 
did a search and there was nothing. And then literally the very next month, fabric shows up on their listing. Now, if you don't love brown like I do, there are all kinds of different colors and patterns to choose from. They're all organic cotton. And this is just a single yard of fabric that we are going to cut up and use to put on our, um, to cover our ferments. So like our kombucha and our water kefir, we'll use these to cover them and they'll just look a little bit more fun than what they do when we use the napkins that we have been using to cover them. One of these days, I would love to actually make some, well, let's see here. I wanna make um, beeswax wrap, which you coat this in a wax and then you can use it in place of plastic wrap. And I also want to make the scrunchy covers that you can put over bottles or bowls you just put elastic around the side and it hugs the jar or the bowl that you put the fabric on one of these days speaking of out of stock items these are three items that we ordered last month that were not in stock that i was able to add to our cart and get this time so we have some nettle leaf we have some ashwagandha root and we have some hibiscus flower. If you haven't heard, Azure is starting to carry a lot more of the medicinal herbs, which we are super excited about. The pricing on them is insanely good compared to anything else out there. Before we get into the produce portion of the haul, I wanna talk about preserving for a second. It's one of those things where you really need to put some thought into it and have a strategy to go into it if you want to count on your preserves to serve you in whatever way that you need. For this reason, we're working on putting together a preserving cycle quick sheet. Now, this is a little bit like our buying cycle quick sheet, except it's for preserving instead of buying. So it's gonna include things like canning and freezing and dehydrating and fermenting. And one of the things that we're probably gonna start with is the fermenting, because there's a few items that our family has fallen in love with, and they've become like must have in the house, on hand, always sort of items. So if we're not strategic about it, we run out of things like the fermented jalapenos and the sauerkraut and the fermented pico that our family has grown to absolutely love. So in addition to trying to keep those in our home, along with the pickles that we do seasonally, we also are hoping to try doing some fermented ketchup and fermented hot sauce and fermented mustard and fermented mayo. So in order to organize all of this, we're gonna start with that fermenting cycle quick sheet. And if you're not on our email list, I wanna let you know that it's coming so that you can get on our email list now so you'll get it when it comes out. For now, we're gonna share with you one of our favorite fermenting projects. All right, we have Asher, our in-house fermenting expert here. It's gonna make us some sauerkraut. We're gonna do both plain sauerkraut. And spicy. And spicy sauerkraut. Both of them are delicious, aren't they? Especially the spicy. Yeah. I'm gonna leave you to this because he's got it. I'm gonna do more spicy than I don't know what want. Okay. Even, equal. Well, equal. We're gonna start off with processing the cabbage. We're gonna mix it with salt. Now since we got this cut up, we're gonna add our salt one tablespoon per cabbage. We're gonna let the, we're gonna mix it, let it sit for like half an hour and it's gonna get all the juice out of it. I'm not sure how it works. I'm gonna need to. <laughs> I'm gonna... All right, we got the first kraut done. And now we're gonna make the spicy one, okay? Where's it going? We have the first one. Now it's time for the spicy sauerkraut. This one, Asher, is amazing at making. It has red pepper flakes, onion, garlic, and carrots. When he's all done, it's beautiful, and it's, oh my goodness, it's amazing. 
Now we're going to add in our, se our seasonings. Now since this has uh, sat for 30 minutes, we're going to pound it down to this crock and let's for, let it sit for three or seven days-ish. Until desired fermentation taste. And now it's time for our produce that we get from Azure. And technically, I guess we already kind of preserved this, so let's get it out of the way. So these are items that we often get every month. One of them is red onions. These are not lasting as long this time of year because it is so warm. What we're noticing is that we're wasting about 5%. And with that, I'm gonna say that the cost is still cheaper than if we were to buy them in smaller quantities. It still makes sense to get the full 40 pounds because we would be paying just as much to get what we needed in the smaller quantity, but we would get less. So I think what we're gonna start doing is doing some pickling, some freezing, and maybe some dehydrating of the onions to make sure that we're actually using everything that we get. Same thing for the white onions, although they do not go bad as fast. <laughs> although they do not go bad as fast as the red onions. Next we have lemons. We have another 10 pounds of these. Let me see how they look. These actually look really good. There's a little bit of greenness in here, but I think they look, I think good, hefty, normal size lemons. These will get used for the kids lemonade stand and we also freeze them in two different ways. First off, we will juice them and freeze the juice. Second, we will slice them and freeze them, slice them up put them in a freezer seal bag. And those can get used indefinitely for lemonade or anything else that we wanna throw lemons into. And sometimes we do dehydrate them as slices as well, but we have those on hand, so I think we're good with the dehydrated lemons. And then we have limes. It's always fun to see what size they're going to be. I think these look really good. So there's been a time or two that there's a lot of them that have this kind of blemish on them, but these, these look great. I'm really happy with these. I think that's a good normal size for a lime. And we kind of do the same thing with these. We squeeze them, juice them, freeze them, and freeze the slices and also dehydrate at times. The kids also make a delicious strawberry limeade that I think I actually like even more than the lemonade. And then we have carrots. We've got two five pound bags. There's something, I don't know, there's something black and really kind of gross on the top of some of these. Um, I'm gonna ask for some further inspection because I think I'm gonna say it's like 25% of this bag. Now granted, you can cut off the top and what percentage is that really? It's on this bag as well. I don't know. What do you think, babe? It's okay, we can cut it. It's okay, we can cut it. Honestly, these are mostly getting used as just snacks for the kids. And coleslaw. During the summertime, we love our coleslaw. Honestly, we love coleslaw during all times of the year. But coleslaw is especially delicious with pulled pork or sloppy joes or Mexican food, we do that. Um, cilantro slaw, that is delicious. So all kinds of different coleslaw, gotta have carrots. And then we have Kevin's kiwi. One of the things that I'm actually excited to use these for is our kombucha second for months. And then we have apples, and these aren't, <laughs> it's not opening, because when they tape them, it doesn't open really well. You know, I am really impressed with Azure's stock of apples into the year. Like, they've done really well with keeping apples on hand, 
I don't know where they're getting them from, but they're all organic. And so far they've all been delicious. So way to go, Isher. Thank you for keeping apples in our home through the summer. And then this is one of my favorite seasonal items. We have a big giant box of Bing cherries. These are delicious. We like to eat them straight. I can't tell you how many have already been eaten out of this box since it got into our vehicle. We're gonna be making a few canned cherry pie fillings. And one of the things that we do with that is we actually don't add any of the clear gel or any sort of starch to thicken it up right then and there. We can it without the gel and then we add the gel right before we make the pie. So it does make making the pie a little bit more laborious, but I think it's totally worth it to not have to use the clear gel that goes in the canned pie fillings. So the other thing, my favorite thing to do with these cherries is to make cherry preserves. So we're gonna show you how we do that now. Okay, so we are going to make some cherry preserves and we're gonna do a double batch, but I need to be very clear about this. If you're gonna do a double batch, you need to do it separately. So our purpose for doing a double batch is that one batch only makes two pints or four half pints. That's gonna be like two servings of cherry preserves for us. So we are going to double it and then probably do another double batch and then another double batch. So Asher has kindly pitted six pounds of cherries for us this morning. And we, oh, Zayden helped too. Thank you. Yes. And we do have a bunch of cherry pits. We're gonna save these to make cherry vinegar. Great to use in salad dressings. So, I'm sorry, cherry pit vinegar, technically. And I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna throw these in a jar, throw it in the fridge so that we can get this a little bit, get a few more in here than just this. Okay, so we're gonna start by getting two pots going of water and divide these into the two of them. All right, so we've got three pounds of cherries in each pot. And to each of those, we're going to add two cups of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. Yeah. It is a lot of sugar. Okay, so I'm gonna stir this up because we do have the heat on. And I'm gonna kind of mash this as it cooks. I personally don't like to have any solid fruit, which does kind of make this more of a jam than a preserve. All right, then we're gonna add two tablespoons of lemon juice to each. So for these first 10 minutes, you're going to be kind of more actively stirring these and working and mashing them until all of that sugar dissolves. If you look over here, this one, we've kind of got more juices that are kind of coming out, mixing with everything. This one's taking a little bit longer. I need a stirrer. Who wants to stir cherries? Me. Okay, so this has been going for about close to 10 minutes. And if you look in here, you can see how juicy this is getting. We didn't add any water, it's all just from the cherries. We did bring out the um, masher because this, because this guy just wasn't cutting it. Our goal is to get it up to that 220 temperature and get it to the point where it's actually gelling. Okay, we have our cherry preserves up to that 220 degrees. It took about that 40 minutes. And I'm just doing one last kind of smush down. We just turned off the heat and kind of show you. It's hard because there's like, there's the cherries on there, but as you can see, it's super thick. It's not runny and... So we're now going to put these into some jars and can them up. All right, so this is a rotating project where we get rotating help because Harbor helped a lot, I think, off camera most of the time. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this and we're gonna fill our jars. I'm guessing maybe one and a half. 
Two pounds of cherries in this one jar, people. Two pounds of cherries. Okay, so pot number two. We didn't even get a pint and a half. So I think I'm gonna bounce that up to four pounds of cherries per pot, which is actually what I originally started with, and then I went down. Okay, so we have a whole whopping two pints of not strawberry stuff. Cherry preserve that we're gonna that we're gonna can. This one we're gonna just throw in the fridge since it's not full. And Kevin's gonna add it to some barbecue sauce and we'll eat it. Probably some English muffins or something. So next time around, I'm gonna plan on probably doing a two pots and then two pots and then two pots and then canning all of that. So I at least have a lot. More. A decent amount. Six to nine. So I at least have six to nine jars to can at a time. I hate canning two at a time. Really makes me think about that electric canner that I've been wanting for a really long time. <laughs> And next we have cleaning products and this month we actually made the commitment and invested in the five gallons of dish soap. I was looking at the prices and I was thinking about the convenience that comes with getting the little bottles and I looked at it and I said, man, we can get way more for way less if we just go with this jug. And so we did it and we will let you know what we think. Honestly, doing one of these has got me thinking that I'm gonna to be totally okay doing one of these for the laundry detergent and the dishwasher detergent as well. Those are the three main cleaning products that we buy. I think the only other product that we buy is um, Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. I wonder if we can get a Castile soap in this five gallon jug as well. Cause I'm thinking we're just gonna line them up on a shelf in the basement. We're gonna put the spigot on there and it's gonna be super easy to fill up our bottles. The other part of this that I forgot, well, I didn't really forget. So on all of the Azure cleaning products, they list on there that they're in a transitional stage of packaging. This says, or it says label and pack changes in process. So I don't know if this is the final packaging or if this is the initial packaging. So I didn't order the spigot because the one that they show is actually like a box that has a bag and it has a spigot that's already on it. So I didn't know for sure if I was gonna need it or not. So thankfully we do have dish soap in stock and I don't have to worry too much about it. So on our next order, I will order the spigot that makes this dispensable. If you've been around for a little while, you know that we've added cleaning products onto our a family food program buying cycle. So this is the month for dish soap. I think next month is the month for dishwasher detergent. And then the month after is a month for laundry detergent. Last month we got laundry detergent, so that makes sense because we rotate every three months. Getting these five gallon buckets, I'm hoping to be able to do more like six months at a time and then eventually a year so that I only have to worry about buying dish soap once a year. We also have some Charlie's Soap Laundry Pre-Spray along with a oxygen bleach. We've been getting the pre-spray. I'm gonna say, I, like, I don't think it's magical, but I think that it's one okay. of the better options that we have in natural stain remover. I've yet to see anything that like is magical and removes all stains. So if you know of something, let me know. So we also recently ran out of the oxygen bleach that we had. Um, I can't remember what brand I used to get, but I saw that the Charlie's soap was on sale one of these recent months. So I threw that in the cart and I hope we like it because we've got three bags of it. Okay, it's my favorite part of our Azure Hauls where we get to do the giveaway. This month, we are giving away a starter water kefir grain. This is something that our family loves, is the water kefir along with the kombucha. These fermented drinks are amazing and I want to encourage somebody else to get started with it as well. But not only do you get the water kefir grains, but you're also gonna get a five pound bag of sugar to feed your water kefir grains. 
along with some items to flavor your water kefir. We have some freeze-dried cherries, freeze-dried blueberries, along with hazelnut and almond extract. With these combined, you're gonna be able to make all kinds of different flavors with very little effort. To enter to win the water kefir package, I want you to let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite pie? Because although I know it's not like Thanksgiving pie season, it is like cherry pie and peach pie and berry pie season. So we've been trying out all kinds of different pies in our home and I'm curious which is your favorite. I personally, I like my forest pie. Okay, last but not least, I have all of our fill-in items. Now these are mostly items that are on our buying cycle that we buy either once every three months, six months, or 12 months. But they're items that I haven't really kept up with. We've running low on and so we're getting a few to kind of fill in till we get to that next buying cycle. One of them is this hard white wheat. We actually ordered soft white wheat as well, but unfortunately that was one of those things that was out of stock. So we have our hard white wheat that is going to need to get processed into some Mylar bags. The reason why I think we're going through more of this is those cookies. Grayson is giving away as samples and that we're testing here in the house. We also have a number of canned foods. We've got our canned artichoke. Again, this is one of those things where I did not stock up too much on these because we weren't eating a lot of them. But we've come up with a couple of dishes recently that are in, I think, our spring recipe pack that everyone loves. And one of them specifically is the spinach artichoke chicken. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And then we also have olives. The kids love olives. Like, I think they go down there and just grab a can and pop them all in their mouth. <laughs> and we've got two cases of the green chilies. Everyone is loving the Mexican food right now, and so we do go through a lot more of these than I was anticipating. We also have a couple jugs of oil. We've got, I think, one olive oil, and we have two avocado oil. This stash was just getting a little low. So got these in effort to kind of let that not go all the way down to zero. We also got two jugs of collagen. I have been drinking way more smoothies than what I used to with the pregnancy and nursing. It's a great way for me to get a decent amount of protein in in the morning and we always put collagen in them. So we grabbed these because they were on sale. We also have not one, not two, but three bags of the smoked paprika. This is one of those things where if you buy one, it's a certain price, and if you buy a pack of three, it's even cheaper. It's something that we go through a lot of, and so we just went ahead and got the three. It's also a fairly inexpensive item. I think the three of these was under $30, so it's totally worth it in order to help build that stash in certain areas. And then lastly, we have vanilla powder, vanilla extract, and a handful of bottles of both the hazelnut and the almond extract. These are things that we use a lot in our kefir second ferments, but also for baking. Um, the vanilla powder, we talk about the vanilla powder a lot, so I'm not going to say too much about it, but I'll just say our family loves it. And... I'm hoping to come up with a homemade alternative at some point in the future. Thank you so much for joining us for this Azure haul. Don't forget to enter in the giveaway. Let us know what is your favorite pie in the comments below. We'll see you next week. Sugar. I saw lots of them night down in Cuba. Did he? Did he roast it? Is he going to be at the reunion back? Yeah. <laughs>